Hi again, you two. So in the first session, we looked at part one of our story, which is Nancy and the Moss Covered Rock. And we were learning that Anansi is quite the trickster, as he had tricked poor lion and poor snake into giving up their delicious food by taking them to the moss-covered rock and making them say the magical words. Now, we asked you to write a prediction of what you thought was going to happen in the next part of the story, which we'll hear in a second. I hope that your predictions mention Little Deer, because Little Deer was the only character that we hadn't seen yet in the story. You might think that Little Deer is going to get tricked by Anansi, or you might think that Little Deer will be able to trick Anansi. Let's find out what is going to happen. Anansi's trick to get food from Snake and Lion had worked so well, he couldn't wait to play the trick again. And play it again he did. Before long, Anansi had played his trick on every single creature, except one. Little Deer was small and could move quickly through the forest without being seen. And Little Deer had been watching each time Anansi had tricked the other animals for their food. It makes me feel sad to see the animals going hungry. It's time to do something about it. I'm going to play Anansi at his own game. First, Little Deer went to the moss-covered rock. She walked around the rock. Hmm. Unusual colored moss. Nobbly bits. It did indeed look rather strange. Next, Little Deer lowered her head to feel the moss with her nose. Ouch! This moss wasn't soft like ordinary moss. This moss felt sharp and prickly. It felt very strange indeed. In fact, it felt so strange, it gave Little Deer an idea. Next, Little Deer went to a secret place in the forest where watermelons grew. She knew Anansi loved these sweet, juicy fruits, so she collected as many as she could, returned home, and settled down to wait. All this time, Anansi was just a short distance away at his own home in the forest. <laughs> so far I have tricked snake, lion, monkey, elephant, hippo, and turtle. That leaves just one creature, Little Deer. I shall have to be careful, though. Little Deer is clever, nearly as clever as I am. Anansi made his way through the forest to where Little Deer lived. Ah, good afternoon, Anansi. I've been expecting you. Uh-oh, this isn't a good start. If Little Deer has been expecting me, she must know what I've been up to. But when Anansi saw the watermelons, he forgot about all else. Little Deer, it is rather hot in the forest today, isn't it? But I have found a lovely, soft, cool place. Would you like me to show you? I would indeed, Anansi. Do please lead the way. Anansi took Little Deer through the forest to the moss-covered rock. Oh, look, he said. What's this? Little Deer took a good look. I don't know, she replied. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Anansi folded two of his legs. Oh, yes, you do. Isn't this a strange moss-covered... Just in time, Anansi stopped himself from saying the last word. I know you're trying to trick me, little dear, but I'm not going to say the words you want me to say. And what words are they? Isn't this a strange, moss-covered... <gasps> Anansi nearly said the words again right there and then. He would have to be very careful indeed. I won't say the words, no matter how hard you make me try. Little Deer moved closer. You're quite right. 
I do know about the magic words. Indeed, I have tried to trick you into saying them. But, Anansi, you're just too clever to do that. Anansi gave a little smile. Yes, I am rather clever, aren't I? Little deer nodded her head, and then she pointed to the moss-covered rock. I'm so tired, and that moss looks so lovely and soft. Won't you sit down with me? It had been a long day, and Anansi felt rather tired too. That's a good idea, little deer, he said, as he lowered himself onto the rock. Yow! Anansi was back on his feet in a moment. How very odd! That moss is prickly like brambles. Isn't this a strange moss-covered rock? <laughs> Crash! Bang! As soon as the words came from Anansi's mouth, he flopped down fast asleep. And he slept, and slept, and slept. And when Anansi finally woke up, one whole night and a day later, all the animals were gathered round laughing. <laughs> <laughs> but did Anansi frown and scowl? Not at all. Anansi joined in. The joke was on him for now. But Anansi knew that soon he'd be back to his tricks. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the story. I know I did. Now, what I want you to think about for your question is, do you think that Anansi is an evil character? Now, to answer that, you need to think, first of all, about that word evil. What does that word mean to you? And do you think Anansi is an evil character? Also, you might want to think about characters that you've met in other stories who you do think could be evil and compare them with Anansi. Now, you could write a few sentences to tell us what you think. So you could write, I think Anansi is not evil because, and give your ideas, or I think Anansi is evil because. To be a really good answer, you'll need to make sure that you use evidence from the text to support it. So in our reading folder, we have put part one and part two of the story, which you can look at to find your evidence. We want to see your answers. I'm really interested to see what you think. So please send them to our year two email and then join us next week for our next story that we will be looking at together. Bye year two.